Welcome back to the channel. We are here once again with our HP TE01-2250 XT, which for 2022 was the cheapest brand new HP desktop I could buy in like a normal kind of shape. There is a playlist for this thing, which is linked right up there as well as down in the description where you can go get all caught up on everything that's gone on. But as of this moment, not a whole lot has gone on. I have not yet powered this thing up. I've owned it for about five months, so I think it's probably time to get this show on the road. So the purpose of today's video is going to be what I'm going to call boot up and back up. Uh, we're going to get it turned on. I'm going to do everything possible to avoid Windows registration because I just don't like that kind of thing. I don't like being forced to sign up for mailing lists and crap like that. I've never seen Windows 11 before, so I don't know how realistic that's going to be, but we'll find out together. And then as soon as we get that process behind us, we're going to immediately make a backup of this thing, which I encourage everyone out there to do. Uh, no matter if you buy this computer or any other computer, as soon as you get one out of the box, make yourself a backup so you have that restart point to preserve forever. So no matter whatever happens, you can always roll back to it. So we'll walk through how to do all that stuff. First things first, I've got this guy plugged into an outlet strip that is currently off. So I'm just going to reach back and kick that switch on and see if this guy does anything weird like the Dells do. As soon as you apply power, they kind of fake boot up. So first power. I heard no noise, no beep, booping, nothing. So let's go with the power button. There it's making noise and beep booping. And my video capture isn't working because of course it's not. So for right now, you've got the ghetto video capture. Why would I ever test anything first? Alrighty then, you didn't miss much. This is as far as we got. So I don't mind telling it where I am and all that good stuff. I'm gonna need to turn on the mouse. I mentioned before that I was going to use the HP mouse and keyboard for all these, so that's what I'm doing. Yep, nope. Uh, as usual, bonus points if you actually know my Wi-Fi networks, why they're called that. Also, as usual, you don't get to see my Wi-Fi key. Looks like I've run into my first fun Windows 11 thing. When you click the show me the password button, it doesn't stay on. It only shows while you're actually holding it. Or maybe that's just me or maybe just today or whatever, but something new. Alrighty, so we are connected to our Wi-Fi. Not at all surprised that it's checking for updates. I'm a little surprised it's checking before it does anything else. Figured it'd want to know our blood type and everything else before we got this far. Oh boy, it's a magic show. Mm, Killy Doakley, this is looking promising. So we can agree to HP and McAfee. Can I accept neither? Make your computer easier to use. Well, that... Windows will read and scan this list automatically. Ah, shut up. That was moderately disturbing. Wasn't expecting that one. Okay, well, it looks like I'm agreeing to this whether or not I like it. Okay, then. Let's, let's skip that for now. So it looks like it's demanding to be set up for a Microsoft account. Let's see if we can weasel out of it somehow. If I was thinking, I wouldn't have connected it to the Wi-Fi. That would have been the smart thing to do. Which, you know, I'm sure is the reason they do it in the order they do it. So as I suspected, they are mandating an account. So there's a workaround for it, but it's not a straightforward one like it should be. Let's see if I can make anything happen. I'm finding some options when I search, but nothing's actually getting it done. So I'm not gonna turn the damn thing off because it looks like I really should not have connected it to my Wi-Fi. <laughs> right back where we were, nice. Nope, nope, nope. Okay. I made that a lot harder than it needed to be. So offline account, skip for now. Yeah, that works. So let's have some fun. No password. So I'm curious if that is actually not a Microsoft account or if it's just gonna phone home anyway, but whatever, best I could do. We'll have another crack at this in the future. I'm planning to put Windows 11 on a couple other things, so we can try again later. No, basically say no to everything. No, no, you may, you may know nothing about me. Nope. HP can do none of these things. Uh, 
Hi. I have to say, I do kind of like the purple graphic. I'm going to take it at its word that it's going to be a little bit, and I'm going to take myself a little break. Okay, I have no idea what this is. Other than, you know, this must be what Windows 11 looks like. So instead of the start button, we have the window pane button. Start key on the keyboard also still brings it up. So, moderate. so those are the pinned apps. So I guess everything is just pinned now? I don't know. Okay. So going to all apps, this basically is just the start menu. Just a cluttery version of the start menu. All right, well, whatever. I suppose first things first. Ugh, no, none of these things. Start. No. Good grief. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is, as I mentioned previously, we're gonna get going on a backup. And to do that, I'm going to use a program called the Seagate Disk Wizard. So we are going to go and find it and download it. Not from whatever that is. The reason I'm using Seagate Disk Wizard is because it's free. And I have Seagate drives. And it has worked well for me for many, many years now. Disk Wizard right there. Okay, so, so it's going to take a short bit of time to download. Then we should be ready to roll. All right, let's take a quick minute to discuss backup drives. As I said just a moment ago, I have Seagate drives, so I'm using Seagate Disk Wizard. Western Digital has the exact same software, they just still use the Acronis name, which is who actually writes Disk Wizard. I have no reason to believe their version wouldn't work just as well as Seagate. Just in general, I've had just personal, anecdotal, better experience with Seagate products than I have Western Digital products, and I will usually just go to them. If you already have Western Digital Drive, that's fine. You can go to their website and do the same thing I just did right here. If not, I'll find some drives that I think are probably an okay value, at least as of the publishing of this video, and link them down in the description if you don't have anything at all right now. I will also say that my personal philosophy on backups is that your Backup drive needs to be at least twice as large as the total capacity of the computer that you would ever fill. So if you have a one terabyte drive and you know you're going to fill a one terabyte drive, you need at least a two terabyte backup drive. And the reason for that is so you can do it twice. So that way you always have recurring backups and you can always go back to the one before the most current one. If you, let's say, got a virus on Monday, backed up your computer Tuesday and deleted the old backup, you may not have known about the virus and you could have hosed yourself. So I always like to try and keep two revisions of backups on my external drives. Also, I said external drives. You see the sticker here, B1A? It's because there's a B1B that goes with him. These two guys are twins. A backup on a singular drive is not a backup if it's the only copy. So I mirror the contents of this guy onto this guy. This is part of a whole larger conversation we need to have at some point about data management. But in short, this is the way I do it. If you can afford two drives, that's great, get two drives. If you can only afford one drive, that's great, get one drive. If you can't afford any drive and you wanna have a backup, you know, you can always look at used options. At least the last time I tried, all of the legacy brands that Seagate has purchased over the years, like Mac Store and Samsung, also worked with Disk Wizard. So if you come across a cheap or old Samsung or Mac Store external drive, they also will work. So there's probably options like that out in the world, but food for thought. I definitely, definitely recommend you get a backup of a brand new PC right out of the gate because you don't really get installation disks anymore. They give you a recovery partition on the drives, but what happens if the drive dies? Then you're screwed, you got nothing. And plus, you know, I'd much rather just have this to deal with it on my own. I know me and trust my habits more than I know HP or trust their habits. I'm not much of a cloud guy, so I would rather deal with my stuff and know what's going on instead of just hope for the best with something else. So anyway, that's the little micro sermon about backups and how we're going to go about doing it today. So our download is completed. I have my Seagate drive plugged in because at least um, normally the software won't even install if you don't have a Seagate drive in the system or plugged into the system. Yep, and there's our expansion. I wonder, do we still have the Goofy Run as Administrator stuff in Windows 11? Looks like we do. I don't know that I'll have to, but yep. Alrighty. We will indeed start application. I will not be participating in anything I don't have to. I accept. Close Edge. Here we are. I'm going to go to Backup. 
HP, NV. All right, select source, entire PC. Select destination, Seagate expansion drive D. I actually want to configure some options here because you can do things like encryption and compression and stuff like that. I don't really want to do any of that. Um, back up sector by sector. It will back up all the blank space too, so you definitely don't want to do that. Compression level, none. Yep. Default, okay. 35 gigs should not take it all that long. I was kind of hoping maybe I could... S oh yeah, I can select a folder. So, yeah. I, I keep my backups a little better organized than that. It's not giving me a dialog to create a new folder, so I guess we get to learn how to do that in Windows 11 right quick. Yeah, just like every other version of Windows. TE01, 2250XD. Alrighty. And just an example, like here's the brand new backup for the Dell 3880 I did last year. I didn't cover that on the channel. I kind of always regretted that. So, all right. Now we see our HP folder, say okay. Off to the races it should go. I wouldn't expect this to take all that long. But we will catch up at some point when it's done. Holy crap, this is the fastest I've ever seen one of these drives operate. That's telling me it's operating at like a gig a second, unless that's megabits. It probably is megabits, but still, that's way faster than I've ever seen one of these drives respond. So whatever USB controller is in this particular HP agrees with this particular Seagate drive, so that is awesome. So the next thing we're gonna do, which is probably gonna have to wait until tomorrow, is we are going to make some rescue media. So it will be all ready to go. If everything goes to pot, we will have a USB stick that we can use to use for recovery on this system. Because if Windows crashes, you still need a way to boot the computer. But my USB stick won't be here until tomorrow. So in the meantime, just going to eject the drive. I always try and get my drives off of wall power and everything as quickly as possible. And I never try and plug them both in at the same time. So if one dies, they don't both get smoked. You know what I'm saying? It is now off the power. One thing I'm going to want to do just in general is start running Windows updates. I could have done this before I backed it up, but whatever. And we're just going to let it do all of its things and get rolling out. Just boatloads of them. Not a surprise. I'm assuming some of these are getting download errors because they want to go after some other things or whatever. I also had a comment in one of my Windows 10 videos about some updates coming from the App Store. So we'll get that rolling too. Maybe. Whether or not that was true then in Windows 10, it doesn't look like to be a big thing now or I'm just too dumb for it. So whatever, I can live with being dumb. Been that way my whole life. Oh, and sure enough, I am too dumb for this. Go down to the library and get updates. Now, what I think this is going to do is update, you know, all of your apps. I don't think this stuff actually runs passively, like automatically, unless you let it. And I also think that there's a reasonable chance that it's going to reinstall a bunch of crap I don't want. Like there's the video editor that we just tried to get rid of. And it looks like it's here to stay anyway, or an icon to download again. There's Spotify we intentionally got rid of, Disney Plus. Bunch of crap I don't want anyhow. So, if you actually want to update your stuff, there's where you can go to do it. So we're going to let that guy run, probably overnight. In the meantime, I'll just leave the thing booted or we will make sure it stays booted just to, you know, if it bursts into flames or anything like that. Okay, I guess edit power plan. Put computer to sleep. Never! No sleep for you. Let's sit in Brooklyn. I'm just curious. Yeah, we, we go ahead and do that never as well. Actually, it doesn't think that'll be a big deal. None of the sleep, none of the hibernate. 
uh, hello? That was interesting. Nope. You leave it all on. Hello? <laughs> yeah, more weirdness. I guess some of these are actually active. That one I'm going to let, let it do its thing. I don't know why it keeps doing that. And once again, maybe this is something that's up with my capture device. Okay, well I don't know if all that weirdness was an artifact in my capture device or if the weirdness impacted my capture device, but we were not screen capping there for a quick second. Anyway, what I was trying to say is we're going to let this guy run for a while and do all of its downloads or whatever it can do. Let's see if I can retry some of these. And I'll just pop back in on it every now and then and reboot it and get it all updatificated as much as I can over the next day while we wait on our stick and see it's doing weirdness again. Given that it's installing updates or might be, I'm not going to worry about it too much. We'll just see what it does in the future. Well, I was going to just keep popping in and out of the room and rebooting it, but the first time I came back, it started popping up with a bunch of spam crap. I knew in the long run that I would want to decontent this kind of garbage. Uh, Dropbox, McAfee, all this crap. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to keep that kind of stuff, but I don't. I consider it all just garbage. If I need cloud storage, I will go find my own cloud storage. If I need virus protection, I will go get my own, uh, so on and so forth. So since it started doing this, I figured I would document it some more. Uh, the one before this was just HP warranty registration, which I expect. I expect it to continually badger me about that too, but at least that's reasonable. Yeah, we'll skip Dragbot. Same thing, McAfee. Skip. Yeah, <laughs> ExpressVPN. No. And good God. No, none of the things. No. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go back into Windows Update because that's actually the stuff I want to happen. Check for updates. Really? I find that difficult to believe. Just for fun. Oh, what in the world is that? No, I'm going to be clicking on whatever this is forever. It looks like my video capture device is acting up. I, it's, it's dropping you guys out. That's no good. I'm almost wondering if it's like a resolution thing. Because this does seem to be in like a really big resolution. This screen does not support HDR, so I need to make sure it's turned off. Yeah, it says it knows it. Okay. That's more a matter of preference, but whatever. It all should be fine. That should all be stuff that the capture device puts up with. I am going to get a better device, FYI. But anyhow, I'm going to reboot it and see what happens another time <laughs> scratch that every time I sit here I come down here and click this stupid widgets icon because I'm you know actually looking for that so let's get rid of it right click on the taskbar Ugh. go away turn that off and then I think we can make this look like Windows 10 and prior if we want yes there we go okay yeah so now this might actually be an upgrade to windows all right now i am going to just leave it alone because i think i have figured out all my problems for the moment with life i'm now enlightened it is the next day and we're back usb drive has been acquired 32 gig is way too big, but this was like eight bucks for a USB 3.0 drive. It's pretty much as cheap as it gets these days. And since I have an emotional problem, I have got it labeled up to begin its new life as forever and ever being our Seagate boot drive. But since we already got to start on it yesterday, I think I'm going to go ahead and continue to just de-junk this thing since we started it and then we'll establish our boot media and then I'll probably back it up again. So I'll have it as it came out of the box and then as I would have preferred it to be. All right, change the plans once again because my capture device hates this computer. I actually just went through and decontented everything, but you didn't get to see how to do it yourself. So we're going to go ahead and make that Seagate bootable media now. Oh, my drive is not plugged in. I told you to be unhappy about that. So let's try all of this again. I'm once again trying something different with the video capture. 
let's get our Seagate drive plugged in, which it is. It's booting up. Okay, we'll just cancel. Let's see if we can, let's try it again. Yeah, now we're good. Yep, you can see it's open now. Okay, Rescue Media Builder. I feel like being a simpleton. USB drive D is my USB stick. Yeah, like I said, it's a little bit oversized for the job. We could do this 32 times. Proceed. Why not? Hmm. Let's go try and format it first. That's interesting. Okay. Okay. Can we access it? Yes. All right, let's try that again. Okay, cool. Let's go into the BIOS and see if we can get it to USB boot. I guess, what, F10 or delete, probably? I don't know HP things. I barely know Dell things. Escape key for start menu. Interesting part about this is my screen capture is going through a VGA adapter. So I was having so much trouble. And my primary screen is going through the normal HDMI. My primary screen is dead right now. So the only way I'm able to see any of this stuff is through the VGA port. And that is an oddity I found with uh, the Dell too, is it did weird things with two screens plugged in. Mm, configure eight boot options, there we go. USB boot enabled, okay. Boot order, OS boot. Let's, we'll just change that since we're here. It does not appear to want to let me change that. Oh, I'm just dumb. Press F6 or F5 to move it up. Okay. So the USB drive should now be our first. Save changes and exit. Yep. Now I still have the USB thumb drive and the hard drive plugged in. So I'm not sure what boot priority it's gonna try. And I still don't have my primary display. Okay, we are in Disk Wizard. I want to recover my disk. And this is the guy we want. Next. Yep, recover whole disks and partitions. Yeah, whatever. I guess I actually have to tell it. Oh. Okay. So all of the above. I believe it's off to the races. Okay, so do I select these guys or... Okay, select destination of disk one. That would be disk one, I'm assuming. Okay, so it's just telling me it's gonna delete everything on that partition, which is fine. Proceed. I guess if I screwed it up, we're gonna find out pretty soon. And it did occur to me that my primary monitor isn't functioning because the disk wizard boot up tool probably doesn't support dual screens. That's a Windows thing. So it may not be obvious, but we are not in Windows. That's what this utility is doing is it's replacing Windows. Well, for the purposes of the computer being able to boot up and operate anyway. I was kind of waiting for it to like pop up and tell me something. So it looks like it's pretty done. USB drive light isn't flashing or anything. Okay, so it just took it about an extra 60 seconds or so there. Okay, is there a polite way to shut this thing down now? I think we're good to just hit the power button. Okay, so that is what I just did. I've unplugged my USB drives and I've hit the power button to reboot it. Okay, so it's coming up with a whole bunch of spammy crap that we got rid of before, and this is all back the way it was before we fixed it, so. Okay, it did recover the disk. It did exactly what I wanted it to. Cool, so now you know how to back up your computer, restore your computer, make the boot media to do it, all that good stuff. Now we can continue on with decontenting this thing. So I think my screen capture is now going to be reliable. It just hates the HDMI port on this computer for some reason. Where were we? We need to fix our charms bar or task bar again. All right, that's fixed. So now we need to go into add or remove programs and go through and get rid of all the crap we don't need or want. I don't care about alarms and clocks. Works for me. Uh, pretty much anything that is proprietary HP or just straight garbage like Cortana, like straight up garbage. Never ever want. This is a desktop. I don't need the camera app. And as you just saw, if I end up going too far and regret one of my decisions, 
can always roll it right back to the way it was. And also, just because I'm doing something doesn't mean you have to. If you really, really want that Dropbox trial, hey, go for it. But I am installing, uninstalling pretty much everything I possibly can. And or just limiting it in power as much as I possibly can. HP audio switch, I'm pretty sure we're going to want to keep. I think that probably has something to do with the way the front panel audio and stuff works. Connection optimizer, I'm not sure. Documentation, pretty much promise you I don't care. Enhanced lighting, same story, don't care. I am the hardware diagnosis or hardware diagnostic tool. Privacy settings, yes, all of them. Please get your spam off of my computer. Don't even know what quick, quick drop is, goodbye. Same with that, goodbye. Sport assist, absolutely goodbye. System event utility, eh, probably not. Intel stuff we're gonna want. Microsoft mail we are not gonna want. Maps. Doesn't everyone use Google for maps? And at some point I probably will do a video for like things I like to have, but that is not going to be this one. Like the software I actually put on my stuff. But it for sure is none of this McAfee nonsense. So new OneDrive, no need. OneNote, nope. Microsoft Photos can stay, Solitaire Collection can stay, and like Microsoft 365, anything like that that's Office or anything, is not going to be a real version, it'll be a trial version, so let's get rid of it. Again, if I decide I want to buy Office, I can. Microsoft News, don't care, goodbye. I told it to get rid of OneDrive. Goodbye. My HP is almost certainly also just spam we don't want. Notepad, I'm an old man, I actually do use Notepad all the time, so it can stay. Home and Gaming Hub, no need. OpenGL compatibility pack, we probably do want. Not even sure what Microsoft People is. Looks like I can't get rid of it even if I want to. It must might be why OneDrive wasn't uninstalling. That might be why. Yes, remove all of the McAfee garbage. Yeah. Pretty sure I can't remove the store, but I can get rid of the horrible options. Like why does the Microsoft Store need your camera? Just, oh, say that this thing has no camera. I don't think it has a microphone either, but whatever. More McAfee garbage. Is it still working on the last garbage? That might be why. Teams, nope. <laughs> to do, nope. Power Automate I actually might want. I think I went through people already, yeah. Love how it starts you over. Spotify, nope. Sticky notes, not for me. Nothing particularly wrong with it, it just not something I use. Voice recorder, no. Weather, I might leave. More McAfee garbage, no. Speaking of, is our old McAfee garbage done? Restart later. Things just uninstall it. A thousand years from now, Office might be done. Okay, that's done. Windows security, we obviously want to keep. Terminal, we want to keep. None of the Xbox stuff. I'll get an Xbox if I want an Xbox. Game, Xbox Game Bar, none of the things. My phone, like, not just no, hell no. I would want Windows to do nothing ever with my phone in any circumstance if I plug it in. Anything else here? Okay, this all looks pretty much fine. I'm gonna reboot it to make sure all those changes took place. We are back. I'm going to continue to detrash it. Like, I'm not a big fan of desktop shortcuts, just in general. The shopping, we are going to unpin from the taskbar. That was a right click, by the way. I'm not really sure what that guy is. That might be a new feature for Windows 11, so I'll leave it alone. What in the world? Yeah, can I unpin it from the start as well? Amazon Prime, no. TikTok, no. Instagram, Facebook, all this garbage. Getting rid of all the stuff I'm never ever going to use. Shortcuts, I mean, Amazon should pay me at this point. Funny enough, I might actually use the Express Cloud. What? Since I don't know what it is, we'll just run this one. Oh, neat, it's something that's installing. So it looks like that is movie editor for Windows 10, which, or for Windows 11, which honestly I might actually use. Mm. Eventually I might actually use, but for the purposes of everything we've done here, 
I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it again. Okay. FDR recycle bin. Oops, I realized I missed a trick. For one thing, Adobe Offers just popped up all by itself. So we're going to unpin that, or at least I think it did. But what I realized I got wrong is these are just the pins for the apps. All of the garbage is actually still in here. So I have to go in here and actually uninstall all this stuff too. Well, what's interesting is, you know, you don't see it in here to uninstall. Did a tree just fall in the woods and this is a philosophical thing or open file location? Okay, so those are just shortcuts. At least it looks like they are because, you know, little shortcut arrow. So I'm just going to delete these out of this folder. The only one I'm going to keep is Disk Wizard because that's the only thing I actually want. Now we'll see if they're actually gone. Yeah, now they're gone. Like maps, I told that to go away before. Oh, it must have been one of the ones where I couldn't. Yep. Yeah, office languages, I don't care because we don't even have Office installed. And yeah, Office OneNote, can I uninstall this? I'm wondering, I'm wondering if some of this stuff came through in Windows updates. Because, you know, spoiler alert, if you weren't paying attention, it's been like a week or so since the last segment of the video. Actually, I think maybe two weeks. But this is what happens when you, you know, edit things and see things you missed. So anyway, we'll let that keep trucking. I'll come over here. Like same deal here, phone link I promise you I don't want. Yeah, I don't think we can get rid of it. I think we had the same problem with the Xbox game bar. Yeah. Okay, so I think that is now as good as it actually gets. Back to where we left off. Alrighty, it's looking like we're getting close. One neat thing I want to show you guys, though, is with Disk Wizard, you don't actually have to restore the entire drive if you just delete one file, either. You can navigate to your USB drive. Okay, so here's our Seagate backup. I'm just going to double-click it. And it opens and navigates just like any other drive. So we are actually inside that backup file now. And we can go do things like that would be the whatever was on the desktop of the computer originally which wasn't anything there probably nothing yeah <laughs> disk wizard still in downloads so it's just a pretty cool utility that is why i like using it because generally speaking it's pretty easy to use and it's just a nice utility to have in the long run so i'm going to restart this guy again and we're going to back it up again and leave it the way I want it to be. Alrighty, and it is back up the way I would have it to be. I'm just gonna take a quick moment here and, okay, so those are the pinned ones. Okay, that's right, all apps is where we need to go. I wonder if I can default it to that and make it a little more Windows 10-y. Okay, so a few minutes of searching uh, revealed that that is way too tall of an order for Microsoft right now. Uh, we'll probably look more deeply into that later, but anyhow, Seagate Disk Wizard, yes, okay. Why is it not seeing? Am I dumb? What's the problem here? It's right there. There we go. Just being goofy. Okay, and I oh, can create a new folder here. I was just goofy yesterday. I'm just going to create a new folder with today's date. Okay. Yeah, whatever. I don't really care. Make sure I have my yep, compression stage set to none. That's good. Okay, back up now. And off to the race it's going to go. It's going to look just like it did before. It's done again. I'm just going to go over to my drive and get my naming and storage conventions to be coherent. That's interesting. So I don't default to F keys. That is a problem we need to fix as well. On the keyboard, F3 is plus volume. F2 is minus volume. I do not want it to stay that way. So I've got a bigger problem. Okay, so rename is not in the menu anymore. We're going to rename this back up to today's date. Wow, it's going to get weird not seeing cut and paste and everything in a menu like this. Why did Microsoft need to just straight up break this? Anyway, we're going to cut that, paste, delete that folder because we don't need it anymore. Boom, there we are. So we've got yesterday's backup of how it came out of the box and my backup today of how I want it. You can see there's over a gigabyte in difference in size between them, which is too funny. Anyway, we are now well prepared to go into the future and do pretty much any darn thing we want because we have a nice big net to fall back on. So that was a comedy of errors, but I think we got the job done regardless. 
All in all, for my first experience ever with Windows 11, not so bad. And despite my technical difficulties with the screen capturing, I think I'll be able to put something decent together with what I've got. But without those difficulties, I may not have decided to do the restore portion of the video, which I think will be useful for a lot of you. Just instill confidence in the people out there that it really is pretty easy to unhose one of these once you hose upon it, if you make a backup from the beginning. So valuable lesson there. I haven't entirely decided what's next up for this guy. I think maybe it's going to be optical drive or maybe we'll toss a hard drive in it. I'm not too sure yet, but things will be a coming. So if you feel like clicking things down there to remind yourself to come back and check them out, that's good with me. If not, I appreciate you guys stopping in for this video. We'll catch you on the next one. I'm Maxie Saddington Bear, and if you like that video, hey, like the video. If you'd like to watch some more of them, here's some more for you. And if you want to come back and watch more, always consider becoming a subscriber. And we'd like to thank you once again from the bottom of both our hearts for stopping in.